Welcome to ETM 260 Computer Aided Design. This is Lecture 8, Assembly Tools, Part 1. This video is supplemented with the PowerPoint for the class. In order to create an assembly, we need to open a new file. I go to New. And make sure that you select Assembly. A model will only be able to do one part at a time. However, since we want to join different parts all together, we need to use an assembly. Make sure that you select the proper units, which must be the same units that have that you have for each of the parts. So we're going to create, create assembly, and then OK. In order to show you the steps of how to create assembly, we're going to do one, which is going to be a vise. Notice that as soon as I create an assembly, the first thing that you see that is different is the Danton plane. You have a Cartesian coordinate, however, you don't have planes because the planes belong to each one of the parts. We need to always start by the main part or the base part of your assembly. We're going to do that by simply selecting the part and we're going to browse by simply opening inside of this file. We're going to start, all the parts are under lecture 8, and we're going to start with the body of the vise. So this gives you a preview of what the part looks like. We're going to click OK. And notice by default, we, we need to provide a position of the object. And we're going to enter it at the origin, the main origin. Once you have it, you're going to select the main absolute origin and you click OK and if that's the case you're going to click um, OK. So you don't uh, notice that this uh, the new version of NX gives you that the first part you want it to be fixed as a constraint it means that it has no motion or no rotation into it. Uh, if you want that to be the case then you click yes and if you want not to see this message again, I'm just going to check it so I don't see it every single time I do an assembly. To see the assembly constraints, you could go into the part now into this menus and you're going to see that you that it says that the vice body has a fixed constraint, meaning that this particular part is not going to be able to translate or to rotate. Now we're going to start different adding different parts to create our assembly. We're going to the Assembly tab, and we're going to Add Parts. So we click on Add. It brings us back to the menu, and then we're going to open. We're going to go for the jaw. We're going to click OK. And notice that we're going to select a origin. Not the absolute part. We're not going to just going to invert a point and you're going to just add it in here and that's where we're going to add the parts. You don't want to have the absolute origin to be the same so that this part doesn't overlap with this. We click OK and that's now the new job. Now what we're going to do is add constraints in order to relate the position of the jaw with the base. The only the thing that we know is that this jaw is going to be allowed to move back and forth along this path over here. So the constraints that we're going to add are the following. Notice that we're going to, under the assembly tab, we're going to do assembly constraints. And these are the different constraints that you're going to have. What we want is that the upper surface of this body aligns with the bottom surface of this. When they are one on top of the other, we're going to uh, use the touch constraint. So notice that you have touch when you want one surface on top of the other one, align when you want them along the same surface, but not in top, but side to side to the other. So we're going to use touch. So we're going to select the upper part of the body and the bottom part of this. And to see that this is correct, we're going to move it into the front view. Notice that they are aligned perfectly. We 
go back to the isometric view. Now what we want is to make sure that this is in the center of this. So we want to make sure that this is always centered with respect to the hole. So the assembly constraint that we're going to use is going to be center. There are multiple ways of doing center. The one that we're going to use at this moment is 2 to 2. means that you choose two surfaces from one object and two surfaces from the other object. The way that index does this is once it selects the two surfaces of one object, it finds the middle point between or the middle line between those two points and then does the same process with the second object and aligns both of the middle uh, lines. So we start this point and this one and then between this and this. Make sure that when you do the selection you do two of one body and then the two of the other body. And if we this properly notice that because we constrained uh, the jaw with the surface by touch is not allowed to go up or down and then this is constrained uh, so that it doesn't go side to side therefore the only motion that this jaw could have it is back and forth to see how it works we move the component we select the component and notice that the only way that it should move should be back and forth if we try to move it in another direction it shouldn't up or down it shouldn't and it shouldn't have any other type of rotation or the, the system um, rotates the coordinate system but the part does not Notice that in this part I have the collision highlighted. If you don't want to see how the parts collided, you could simply say no or none. And notice that it moves back and forth without showing the collision. The next part that we're going to add is going to be the jaw screw. So we're going to add the component. Open. select the object, we're going to snap it to this point and we're going to click OK. We're going to zoom out and the idea of this jaw screw is that it's going to be attached to the jaw body, to the uh, jaw, uh, to the jaw, vice jaw and it's going to be able to move back and forth with it but this screw is able to rotate. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this screw goes inside of this part over here. There are two ways that you could do it. You could align the axis of this screw with the axis of this hole and then touch this surface with this surface. Or you could make it uh, concentric. Concentric actually does the two steps in one. So we will try that one first. We're going to assign constraints, we're going to do concentric, and what we said is that this, this circle is going to be concentric with this one. So notice that immediately aligns the axis and makes them flush to each other. If that's what you intend this, concentric works very well with that. So now let's verify that the motion that we want for the screw is what it is supposed to be. As we said, we have the screw supposed to go back and forth along with the jaw and it's supposed to rotate and notice that it does and it does not make the jaw rotate. It's exactly what we wanted it to be. The next part we'll add will be the screw bar. So we're going to add and we're going to open the screw bar and we're going to place it somewhere around here. What we want the screw bar to have is to be right along this hole and we want it to be centered so that it doesn't move back and forth. So let's just start. We're going to align it first. Oops, assembly constraints. And we're going to align the axis. So we're going to align this axis that we have here with this axis of this hole over here. So notice that now it's aligned. 
So now what we want is to be able to have this bar right in the middle of this section. So we're going to use center. But notice that this particular screw doesn't have two surfaces that I could find the middle for. So what we're going to do is we're going to add one to two, meaning that I'm going to choose one quantity, which in this case is going to be the axis, and I'm going to align it with two, meaning that the two surfaces that I find over here is going to find the middle and is going to be aligned with that axis that I originally selected. So I'm going to do the axis and then I'm going to select this surface and this surface over here. I'm going to orient it and now it's going to be like this. Every time that you constrain, I will advise you to double check your motion to ensure that it works exactly how you expected it to be. So now notice if I choose this component component supposed to rotate right so notice that it rotates is not allowed however to go back and forth up or down and then if I want to choose a motion for this notice that this rotates it makes the screw rotate which is exactly the motion that you want the next thing that we're going to add are the globes that go on the end over here so we're going to add the components and we're going to go for the globes and we need two of them so I'm just going to have them added right here. So the way I'm going to do them, each of the globes is going to go into this side and that side and I'm going to make collinear, uh, concentric the circle with the end of the circle. So assembly constraint, concentric this circle with this circle works nicely and then I'm going to do the same process concentric of the circle and then I'm going to select the other side so carefully you're going to select the other side so notice that the glove goes into the in part of the bar which is not what we want so before you get out of this screen make sure that you reverse the direction so that is exactly what you want and then you hit OK. If we double check the direction the motion of this notice that this bars the gloves should be able to rotate however they shouldn't be able to translate and if I want them to move so notice that they won't go up and down and if I ask them to rotate, they will rotate along with the bar and then the screw. The next part we're going to add are going to be the plates that go below this assembly. So we're going to add, we're going to open the plates, base plates, and we're going to add two, and we're just going to add them over here. Notice that this plate in the upper surface, it has a countersunk hole, which means that they have a screw. That is screw should be placed from the bottom part of the surface. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to make, we're going to touch the bottom surface of the plate with the bottom surface of the assembly. We're going to assembly constraints. We're going to touch bottom part of this with the bottom part of this. So notice that now the contract zone hole is at the bottom. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to align the surfaces, this back surface with this back surface. And we're going to double check that the alignment is correct. Going to the front view, notice that they're properly aligned and we're going to see whether the screws are also aligned. Notice that they're perfectly aligned. So we're going to do the same process for the back. So we're going to assembly constrain. We're going to do touch for the bottom and the bottom. And we're going to align the 
front with the front okay and once again we're going to double check that the alignment is correct and notice that all of them are aligned so now we're just going to place them in the right position we're simply going to align this front surface with this front surface and then we're going to do this back surface with this back surface now we have properly placed both of the plates the next part we're going to align or to going to insert is going to be the screws so we're going to go with screw number one I'm going to add two to show you two different ways to uh, constrain it however notice for the final assembly you're gonna need four so I'm gonna have two and I'm just gonna add them this part over here these screws are located at the bottom part of the base plate there are two ways that you could uh, constrain this one using um, a line of the axis and then touch align the surfaces or directly if you do concentric so let's try the first method I'm going to align the surfaces so notice that you have this one and this axis over here and they're going to be aligned so now notice that they're one in top of the other so it's in here and then we're going to touch the surfaces the upper surface of the screws goes to the bottom part of the surface notice that it's in the opposite direction you simply rotate it and now it's aligned the other way of doing it is by simply using concentric you select the upper part of the screw with the upper part of the hole once again notice that it's in the opposite direction you switch the direction and now they're aligned it's a matter of preference of which one of the two methods you prefer to use in order to fully finalize the assembly there are a couple more screws that are missing uh, you could add the other two screws in the bottom over here number one number two that go on the bottom and the one that is in the top but the process is exactly the same so let's now go over a couple of other things that you could do in the assembly if you go to this different navigator notice that we want to see in the constraints we see all the list of the different constraints that you have in the assembly you want to make sure that they're all nice and green if you have yellow that means that it has a small issue or conflict and if it has red that means that you have over constrained your assembly which is not a good thing if you want to go back and look in details on a particular part there are a couple of ways that you could do it if you notice over here you could go to the different parts once they are highlighted or they are hidden into here notice that you have all the different parts if you want to let's see look about details about the bias jaw you could just simply double click here or you could double click in the part once you double click in the part you could go now go to the menu and it shows you all the steps that were done to create that particular part you could make modifications to the part and the good thing is that it will reflect in the original part and also in the assembly once you're done with that notice that as the part that I selected becomes darker and the other ones kind of become like ghost if you want to go back to the assembly simply go to the assembly navigator and double click on the assembly and all the parts will be activated again another thing that you see over here is that you will have the all the constraints shown in some cases you want to avoid seeing them so you could go to the show and hide command and you might want to remove the constraints and notice that you will be able to uh, take that away from uh, the screen in general you always want to find that what are the degrees of freedom of a particular part in your assembly a shortcut to do that in an X you simply highlight the part 
and click on show degrees of freedom. Notice that what this shows is that this part is only allowed to move back and forth. As we said before, we constrain it so that it doesn't go up and down, side to side, or rotate. If we do, for example, that now for this part, and show the degrees of freedom for this part, sorry, let's select again, and show the degrees of freedom. Notice that it says that this part is able to go back and forth, and is able to rotate, which is exactly what we want. So you could do that by actually moving the part and test to verify the motion, or you could simply check out the degrees of freedom for each one of the parts to indicate, um, to show the motion that they are supposed to have and to double check of how they are supposed to be.